Hello, everybody. Welcome to, uh, I guess, my 10-minute uh, <laughs> lightning talk slash rant. It's be about one of my big pet peeves, the uh, knowledge and skills gap. I think the alternate title for this would be, um, we have a lot of great tools, but no idea how to use them. That's in reference to a blog post I made uh, recently. So anyway, let's jump into it. So who am I? Um, I co-authored a book called The Fundamentals of Data Engineering. You can kind of see it on the shelf over there. Um, it's pretty popular. A lot of data engineers use it, and I guess that's a good thing. Um, I also founded companies, I invest in companies, I advise companies. Uh, I think I jokingly call myself a recovering data scientist. I believe I was the OG in that. Uh, I still work as a data engineer and architect at my company. Um, Shovel giving talks, and um, yeah, that's about it. Climb rocks, do other stuff. But enough about me. You want to learn about my talk. So the motivations for this talk. You know, as, after I wrote uh, Fundamentals of Data Engineering, I, I felt like, you know, the book definitely did a, a good job at explaining data engineering. And, I, and to, to see it widely adopted was, I, I think, very cool and very humbling. And it also made me start realizing that a lot of the problems that I've seen in the data space, and I've been in the data space for over 20 years now, um, we, we keep repeating these problems, right? And I'll get into what these are. But, um, you know, it, and it kind of zoomed out. And I was like, well, there's there's... We're trying to solve classical data problems. You know that is, uh, um, you know, BI reporting, analytics, even most data science problems. We don't have a shortage of great tools or technologies at this point. And in fact, I would say we may have too many, which I'll talk about in a bit. But yeah, why do we keep making the same mistakes? That's a very good question. I, I'm going to dive into some ideas on this. Um, but I think unless we we level up level up our skills, level up our knowledge. Uh, we're gonna continue being stuck in, in the same rut that we've been in you know, um, for decades. So this came out earlier this year. This is the mad data landscape, the uh, machine learning AI and data landscape. And there's over 1400 logos on this slide. Like how do you, how do you know what tools to pick? It's kind of like you need a James Webb telescope to, to zoom in on all these things and figure out what, uh, what you're gonna use. But again, I, you know, all these uh, tools are here to solve, um, you know, specific types of problems. But if you zoom out, why is it that the failure rate of data projects <laughs> is still hovering around 85%? Um, again, there's no shortage of, of technologies and solutions out there. And so I, I think, again, one of the biggest issues we have as an industry is just the, uh, the knowledge and skills gap. So let's talk about the, um, the current situation here. Now, the current situation is data is still a complex and immature industry, right? Data, the data and computing industry hasn't been around that long compared to other professions, maybe like accounting or medicine or something like that. But, you know, the technology does um, run the world these days. Uh, data is increasingly um, running the world, right? Uh, but it's complicated. And, and yet, you know, we, we tend to choose tools over skills. I would say, you know, the situation is we have the cult of agile where we move fast, uh, break things. But along the way, we've, we've lost a sense of formal practices and rigor. You know, I can make a very strong argument that we're actually, as, a, as an industry, perhaps in worse shape than we were. Um, again, it's, I don't think it's the fault of the tooling. There's plenty of great tools, including Arabyte, for example. But, um, you know, the, um, the practices continue to, to erode over my observations. Another big uh, gap is, um, you know, the uh, data literacy and education gaps. So we can talk more about this, but company-wide, what we're seeing is, uh, you know, data is being used to power more and more um, parts of businesses. But you know, I'd argue that data literacy is one of those things that it's uh, sorely lacking. If you, if you talk to people, especially non-data people, um, you know, about data-specific types of things, you know, anal analytical problems or you know, the buzzword now is AI. Um, I think there's a big gap between what people believe they know and and what they actually know. And so I think that, you know, again, data literacy, education gaps, data, you know, the complexity of the industry, um, we tend to choose tools over skills and uh, the cult of agile. Uh, I think all these are, um, you know, sort of to blame for, for where we are right now. Um, let me give you some examples too, right? I think there's, um, you know, when I was coming up, data modeling was something that people did, uh, you know, it was something that, you know, people would use to, to assess the business. <laughs> understand how data uh, fit into this and how you describe the business with data. And right now what I see is we've actually gone quite a bit backwards in data modeling. Um, you know, I'm working on a new book on this and it's been a topic near and dear to me. And what I've, what I keep seeing is, you know, we keep reacting uh, to, uh, to questions and um, you know, the needs of the business, not really understanding the data in the context of the general business. 
And, um, you know, this manifests itself in a number of ways, you know, thousands and thousands of tables or views or materialized views that, that make no sense when you try and put everything together. It's hard to find data, um, you know. So this is, you know, one manifestation of it. Uh, data architecture is now built and it's held up with duct tape and glue. Uh, you know, mostly figuratively, maybe literally, depending where you are. There's a lack of standardized skills and practices on data teams. Uh, you know, what I, what I do notice is a lot of data teams, they tend to um, uh, just wing it, right? Because again, it's a very reactive mode. The cult of agile is promoting a, um, a sense that, you know, you, you operate in two week sprints. Um, this makes it really hard to standardize on skills and knowledge and, and to think about data. I always say that data is a thinking person's sport. And this doesn't neatly tie itself into something where you're moving um, in, in the form of tickets in a, in a way that it was more suited to delivering features for software. Data is different, right? Um, and this does manifest itself, in, again, in terms of a uh, lack of skills and practices uh, because you don't have time to either learn it or um, we just you don't even know what you don't know, right? And finally, the, the business doesn't seem to understand what data teams do. Um, you know, so I think this, this is a big problem, especially now that the uh, costs are being uh, cut back on and so forth. Um, you know, so this is definitely manifests itself in some, um, you know, probably some other ways too. But these are some examples that I see of, uh, you know, basically how you know, when we're talking about skills and knowledge gap, right? These are um, sort of the consequences of this. I want to give you some stats real quick, right? So Pluralsight, they're an education platform. So I'm sure they have a vested interest in saying that education is awesome, but uh, but this is an interesting one. 52% um, of technologists emphasize the importance of learning new technology skills, but only 39% say their manager helps them cultivate needed skills. 81% um, of tech managers believe their organizations upskilling programs that effectively prepare employees for new projects. So there's an obvious disconnect between what management thinks and uh, what, what uh, you know, the individual contributor thinks. Uh, so you know, this is definitely one exhibit uh, of, a, of a problem. And that's something I notice. It's, um, you know, it, it's often the, uh, on the individual contributor to, to level up their own skills, right? I think this is kind of a crying shame. Uh, companies aren't investing in it. Uh, here's another stat, sort of a macro stat, but it, I think it's a whole. 46% of employees believe that their current skill set will become irrelevant by 2024, uh, but only 34% feel supported by organizations' uh, skill development opportunities. So PwC and MIT a joint study there. And so, again, big disconnect. Uh, people want to learn, right? Um, but even if they want to, uh, um, you know, do they have uh, the empowerment? <laughs> is their company uh, supporting them? And so I think this is, again, a really big issue. Um, the big thing that we need to look at is, is assessing um, skills over tools. You know, once you have the skills, uh, then that, may, that puts you in a better position, position to evaluate um, the tools and, and that you're going to use. This goes to fundamentals too. Learn the fundamentals. Learn how things work. Learn how operating systems work. Learn how you know, um, you know Bash works and, and Unix and, so, and Linux and so forth. Like these are the tools that you're using. These sort of underpin all the um, uh, you know the, the the greater tools and technologies, right? Uh, so these are Again, sort of the, the basis. So understand the fundamentals um, to put you in a better position to, again, evaluate um, the tools and technologies you're going to be choosing for your stack. There's also the notion of data literacy for the broader organization, right? So if, you, if you're trying to serve end customers and business users and they don't understand uh, the context in which to think about data or the skills to um, evaluate decisions through the lens of data, then I think that this really cuts short your ability to be effective as a data practitioner. So it's level up in all these areas. But there's some inexpensive ways to do this. You can do book clubs. You know, I speak at a lot of book clubs about my book, and I think these are awesome. It means that you know teammates are getting together, um, reading a book, talking about it, and are seeing how that fits into their company. I mean, you can do lunch and learns across different departments. Maybe um, you know, bring in marketing or sales and have them understand what you do, right? I think this is going to create the empathy and hopefully create the data literacy um, and understanding across uh, different departments that you serve, right? And do lunch and learns, you know, between your teams too, like engineering, you, and so forth, and just really bridge that gap. Um, empathy and knowledge go a long way. I would say also attend meetups, or better yet, have meetups at your office, and um, you know, bring in the public and you know, have a good discussion. Again, this facilitates sort of cross-sectional, cross-disciplinary learning that you can uh, apply both at your company and other people can apply at theirs. Uh, discussions I've had at meetups have been amazing. Um, there's also what I call the Gemba Walk. Well, I don't call it that, but that's what it's called. <laughs> this is a practice from Lean. And it simply means to get out there and under, you know, understand the business. Go walk the floor. It's come from old manufacturing uh, uh, practice where people just go walk the floor and see what's going on. Talk to people, right? And through this, you understand purpose, uh, process, and people. 
right? So this gives you the context to understand what are the skills that you're going to need to do, as well as to understand the, the broader business. Uh, part of the skills gap, too, I think, is we operate very much in our own silo as being data people. And we fail to recognize the larger business. At the end of the day, you're there to serve the business. And so the Gimbal Walk is a uh, very cheap way to do things. You simply go out, look around, talk to people. You know, to kind of wrap up, I think that, you know, the biggest gap that we have as an industry is simply just um, the knowledge and skill, um, you know, skills to use, use the awesome tools uh, that we have to the fullest potential. You can learn more about me on uh, my sub stack, which is there, or you can uh, do the uh, QR code right there and uh, add me on LinkedIn. Uh, happy to meet you all. Thankful to be part of this event and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.